This video is brought to you by Surfshark. Stick around to hear more about the special discount they're offering to the entire upper echelon community. Electric vehicles are becoming a craze. Widespread activist energy, media support, venture capital money flowing into the industry nonstop, and all signs point to a monumental adoption curve and a cultural phenomenon in tow. In truth, it might be long overdue. Decades ago, electric cars were set to rise in popularity, only to mysteriously vanish under the pressure of oil companies and various manufacturers. At the time, the health of the environment was perceived to be less important than the wealth of the economy, and as a result, the movement died. More recently, however, electric vehicles have risen again. Led by Tesla, at least in the United States, Tesla is now losing to a China-based company called BYD in global sales. EVs have become a symbol of wealth, but not only that, they've become a symbol of elevated principles. Driving a Tesla means you care. You are the one who puts the environment first. You are the one with the money to make a change, and you are the one leading the charge against an oppressive global fossil fuel complex. Driving a Tesla for some is a badge of honor because they are making a difference, and they are taking a stand. This luxury vehicle, sculpted and pristine, is a symbol of the future, and for its beating heart, a sustainable lithium-ion battery that can drive you half a million miles or more. But what is used in this battery? What incredible piece of engineering has made this revolution possible? The answer? A trifecta of synergizing metals known as cobalt, lithium, and nickel. These three metals have made an electric vehicle not just possible, but appealing. These three metals have allowed for technological leaps in the electric vehicle industry that were previously thought to be impossible. But what if these three metals came with a price? Today, I want to take a look at electric vehicles with a bit of a focus on Tesla and examine the heart of their design. Where do these metals come from, how do we get them, and how clean really is your clean vehicle? To preface, these companies right here are the rare earth metal suppliers, refineries, and mines that Tesla buys from. However, these are only the direct supplier relationships and do not account for further partnerships with middleman companies and other manufacturers. Just keep that in mind. Alright, once again, it's time for Surfshark. Modern internet usage is rife with security concerns and potential attack vectors. Playing games, browsing websites, basically anything you do is at risk, and Surfshark is here to help with that. Surfshark is a VPN provider, virtual private network, and VPN services come with a hefty number of insulating security measures. Surfshark VPN can help offer protection from certain phishing attacks, a growing problem on modern social media. It can protect against malware, DNS tunneling, DDoS attacks, spyware, and also shield you from the predatory data harvesting and tracking of big tech companies. More than that, Surfshark can actually unlock additional content on streaming websites, like Netflix, because geographic location is tied directly to licensing agreements. Simply change your region and enjoy increased options in your video library. Surfshark can get you around regional censorship as well, such as government restrictions on various websites, and also offers encryption, IP protection and modification, and so much more. Today, they are offering 83% off and three full months for free if you click the link down below using promo code ECHELON. Again, that's promo code ECHELON and three full months free if you click the link down below in the description. Big thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring the channel. Okay, with all of that said, let's officially begin with nickel. According to the Nickel Institute, nickel is the 24th most abundant element in the entire Earth's crust. However, abundance does not equal cleanliness. Nickel mining is having a tremendously negative impact on the Philippines. From NBC News, referring to Rio Tuba, quote, the raw nickel dug out of the ground here ends up in lithium batteries of plug-in vehicles manufactured by Tesla, Toyota, and other automakers, according to an NBC News review of company filings and shipping records, end quote. It goes on to describe that this nickel mine is drastically cutting into the rainforest, affecting local residents, producing incredible amounts of runoff, and that local zoning laws are being systematically changed through political corruption to allow looser and looser restrictions on mining governance so that the operation can continue to expand. For Tesla owners here in the United States, as an example, that reality and environmental impact is far off and unconcerning. The vehicle is surely more beneficial than harmful, this is just one example of unfortunate expansion, but the damage being done here is undeniable. Nickel mining itself has a hefty environmental toll. According to an analysis by CBC, quote, because of the energy intensive processes required to extract the metals and minerals used in batteries, battery production has its own environmental footprint. Air pollution, water contamination, and the destruction of habitats are all potential side effects of mining nickel, a key metal for current battery technology. Canada is the world's sixth largest supplier of nickel." End quote. Now, remember, Tesla has a direct relationship with Canadian supplier Vail. Let's move over to Indonesia, another top nickel exporting country on a global scale, where pollution from nickel mining is reaching catastrophic levels. 
In the region of Kawasi, on Obi Island, the seas are becoming muddied and brown. The nickel waste is lethal to existing coral reefs. Fishermen are faced with an ongoing nightmare, and there is nothing they can do to stop it as the ocean around them dies. The nickel industry is expanding year after year, and the price, as well as demand, only ever increases. More recently, in 2022, Prony Resources, in a direct relationship with Tesla, acquired the Goro Mine in New Caledonia. Goro Mine has famously had five acid leaks into nearby bays and reefs since 2010, with additional struggles for the native population, faced with a massive rare earth metal mining industry that is destroying their home. In Madagascar, the story is no different once again. Children and elderly residents of the surrounding area, when it comes to mines, are made sick by excessive pollution of the water supply. They frequently have mouth and eye infections. The chemical pesticides that were employed to protect workers from malaria killed all the bees, and when pollination stopped, surrounding crops began to die, affecting farmers and untold further residents. These things may seem small on a global scale, but the aggressive and widespread destruction left by mining operations desperate to fulfill an electric vehicle craze is a constant battle that has untold and disastrous consequences. All of this makes no mention of the tremendous amount of fossil fuels being burned to carve into the Earth's surface. Industrial mining equipment creates an unbelievable amount of carbon emissions just to obtain the metals required for one single battery. And all of this is being done in some of the most important geographical regions on Earth when it comes to climate stability such as the rainforest, or next to coastline reefs. As reported by NBC, Elon Musk has stated that nickel is the biggest concern for Tesla when it comes to scaling lithium-ion cell production. But when we remember the trifecta of metals required, I'd like to make the case that nickel might actually be the least damaging of the three. Let's move on to cobalt. This is an aerial view of Kolwezi in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Kolwezi is home to a cobalt mine run by the Dongfang International Mining Company. Dongfang is a subsidiary of Huayu, and Huayu is a direct partner of Tesla. Over the span of three years, this mine by itself has significantly displaced residents and harmed the landscape, but for DR Congo, there are far more shocking struggles. Reported on by Nordia and Sky News, DR Congo is home to an estimated 40,000 child laborers who work in hellish conditions, some of them as young as four years old, to mine, sort, and refine cobalt. DR Congo is the overwhelming leader, by far, in cobalt exports worldwide. No other nation even comes close, thus leading to an electric vehicle rush that directly fuels a child labor crisis and an ecological disaster in that part of the world. And yet, Tesla owners sit there and drive their car as if they are somehow enlightened and superior. Cobalt exposure has been studied for its link to cancer, as tens of thousands of children work directly with it in obscene conditions. And according to research from the Department of Environmental Chemistry within the University of Warmia, quote, apart from natural cobalt contents in the environment, pollution with this element has begun to increase in recent years. The main cause of this is the growing extraction and manifold application of cobalt in different branches of industry. The appearance of cobalt levels exceeding the environmental threshold levels has led, however, to disturbances in the proper functioning of living organisms." End quote. That same study notes that cobalt production has increased more than sevenfold just from 2008 through 2015, and that upward trend is only increasing. A satellite analysis of the MOA region in Cuba found that a cobalt mine in that area had created a 1,400 square acre dead zone. This was described as a lunar-like surface that is completely void of life, with plumes of pollution contaminating miles of coastline and hefty chunks of the nearby river. Apple, Google, and Tesla were specifically named in a 2019 lawsuit over the death of numerous child laborers. Now, the plaintiffs went on to lose that case because the burden of proof required them to illustrate that Tesla was knowingly benefiting from these practices, and that is an incredibly hard bar to clear. But the fact remains that knowingly or not, Tesla is embroiled in an industry and region of the world where horrifying practices are employed so that they can make electric vehicles and drivers can pretend that they are helping humanity. Here's the thing, southern Congo is not just rich in cobalt, it is also rich in uranium. Large deposits of this radioactive material were once a catalyst behind Congo's involvement in the Cold War. And not only are there a hefty number of mining operations employing children, tens of thousands of them, but the surrounding regions have begun to record dramatically elevated radioactivity as the mining waste pollutes rivers, underground drinking water, and agriculture sites. That's bad enough, but there's one more critical element of an electric vehicle, lithium. According to various estimates, lithium usage, when electric vehicles require about 10 to 12 kilos of the metal per battery, which is over 26 pounds, 
has more than doubled since 2016 and will require hundreds of thousands of tons, that's 2,000 pounds per ton, every year by 2030. These are incredible numbers, but let's examine them a bit closer. According to Kitco, Chile's lithium miners, as of right now, already consume 65% of the region's water supply. This is a result of lithium mining techniques. There's a lot of evaporation involved, but also a result of global concentration. Lithium is primarily sourced from the Lithium Triangle, which is a region of salt flats between Bolivia, Argentina, and Chile. These countries are number one, two, and three on the global list of lithium reserves by an incredibly large margin, containing a combined estimate of 47 million tons. For reference, the next three highest concentrations are America, Australia, and China, with just 17 million tons between them. As it stands right now, aside from Chile and the obvious water crisis that has been born there, Argentina and its mining regions are also facing a water disaster. Crops are affected, dust storms are increasing, and according to Marcelo Stico, an independent hydrologist, lithium mining and the freshwater losses as a result of it directly could soon, quote, make life in the region impossible, end quote. According to a Wired magazine investigation titled The Spiraling Environmental Cost of Our Lithium Battery Addiction, lithium mining has led to toxic spills in regions like Tibet, where hydrochloric acid has leaked out of the evaporation pools because the runoff and waste and spillage from lithium mining is extreme. Three metals, nickel, cobalt, and lithium. These three metals, or at the very least a combination of two of them, as some companies try desperately to shift away from cobalt, are required for all electric vehicles. Nickel mining is destroying coral reefs and coastline ocean for farmers and indigenous peoples all across the world. Indonesian companies have, and continue to lobby for, to save on cost, dumped their waste into the deep sea ocean with untold consequences. There is air pollution, water pollution, and devastation of rainforests, while acid leaks and other serious consequences have become more and more common, even specifically in a mine that is used by Tesla. Cobalt mining is concentrated in one particular part of the world, the Democratic Republic of the Congo has seen an indescribably horrific rise in child labor and slavery, with tens of thousands of children digging in radioactive mines to recover toxic materials that are linked to a growing number of health conditions, including cancer. Radioactive waste, water pollution, and habitat destruction are also an issue, but the humanitarian consequences of electric vehicle-driven cobalt mining are insurmountable, and Tesla has a partnership with Glencore, one of the companies alleged to be directly linked to some of these issues. Lastly, lithium mining is poised to make entire regions of the world uninhabitable as it destroys agriculture and consumes fresh water. Tesla is partnered with Livent in Argentina, where water scarcity and mining operations are on track, according to some hydrologists, to not only pollute, but utterly destroy the landscape itself. And the alternative locations available, where hundreds of thousands of tons of lithium can be mined on a yearly basis, are practically non-existent outside of that triangle. All of this can be said before we even address the reality of a fossil fuel-powered industrial mining complex. Spillage, runoff, waste, they're all bad, catastrophically bad, but the energy consumption and fuel usage of these mines is staggering. Estimated by the University of Toronto and published by the Wall Street Journal, a Tesla Model 3 requires 65% more carbon emissions to manufacture than a RAV4. This gap obviously closes and then reverses during its driving lifespan after tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of miles. But carbon emissions for battery production alone account for nearly 10 tons of pollution. And this comes on top of all other environmental and humanitarian prices you actually pay for that car. I believe it was YouTuber Awaken with JP who said, Owning a Tesla makes me feel like I feed the hungry without giving them any food. I enjoyed that line, because buying a Tesla is attempting to solve one problem with a product that exacerbates five more. You can feel good about that one, or you can recognize the five. Ultimately, it's up to the individual. At the end of the day, electric vehicles are a modern craze with hollow surface level satisfaction. They offer a self-indulgent mechanism to feel superior while spurring a multitude of crisis factors in developing nations all over the world. You can buy one, I just think it's important to see reality for a lot of people, and not the idealistic marketing hype of a green energy movement or a clean energy movement that has plenty of its own disastrous consequences and is anything but clean. You, watching this, right now, with your Tesla, you're not saving the planet. That's it. If you want to support, there are links down below, Locals and Patreon for a monthly fee, 
Odyssey, a YouTube platform alternative, another creator to check out, merchandise, I'll have a new sweatshirt offering soon, I think, just have to make a few changes to the design, I'm super slow with merch, also social media, etc, cetera, etc, cetera. but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. Thank you all for watching, and have a nice night, except for Tesla owners.